Hi everyone! Today we're going to be coloring more in this page from Tales from the Witch's Cottage by Hannah Carlson. And today's going to be a slightly different change of pace because I'm going to be using polychromos pencils. The reason I'm using polychromos pencils is because we're going to be coloring the cat. And when I color fur, I really like having a harder pencil that keeps its point a little uh, easier than a Prismacolor. Prismacolors are so soft, they just kind of start crumbling after you use them, which is really nice when you want something smooth and creamy, but that's not really what we want with fur. We want to show the, the texture of the hair. So I'm using Polychromos. I'm going to be using all of the warm grays. I also have the Prismacolor Cream because I want to go around the edges of the cat with that to continue our backlit highlight sort of thing that we've been doing. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the cream around the cat. And if you don't have polychromos, it's not a big deal. You can use Prismacolor. You can find similar colors probably in either the warm or uh, French gray, warm or French grays, whichever you prefer. And you'll find similar colors to the ones that I'll be using with the polychromos. You'll just have to keep them sharpened. You'll just have to sharpen them a lot to get that texture. It's achievable with Prismacolor. It's just more efficient, I think, with the polychromos. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And I'm just going around the edges of the fur, kind of lighten those lines. Create a highlight. That's going to resist some of the other pencil that we put down. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do is start coloring around the face. I'm going to take warm gray 2, which is this one, and I'm going to start coloring here around that. This is a really light gray, so I'm going to do the lighter areas of the cat, which is going to be around the face, this part of the face here where the mouth is, kind of right around the nose. And then maybe just a little bit on top of the nose. I think we'll go a little bit darker up here as we go up the nose. So just kind of lay it down like that. The nice thing is about coloring a cat, I do find it intimidating and I just remind myself, you know, it's not an exact science. The color patterns on an animal like this are organic and so they can be a little messy and weird shaped. It's not a big deal. If we feel like we make a mistake, that's just the color of the pattern of the fur. Um, let's see. I'm looking at a reference photo, but it's hard to see the ears. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just do this light gray kind of around the ears. And then I'll do a darker one in that spot that I left blank for now. So light gray, just kind of around. And right now I'm not really worried about fur texture, I'm just mapping the colors. Let's see, around the eye is going to be pretty light. And I'm going to leave a little spot here for a darker stripe right at the corner of the eye. If you can imagine that eye curving inward on the other side of this bit here would be like the tear duct. So I'm leaving where the tear duct would be, giving it a stripe. Hmm, maybe right underneath the mouth is going to be pretty light. In fact, right underneath the mouth, I'm going to go ahead and do with warm gray one really lightly. I think it's going to be a little bit lighter than underneath the muzzle. And just kind of fade that up, that's gradually going to fade into something darker. And maybe some little ends of the fluff around the head. 
So here now is where I'm kind of creating a fur texture because I'm adding in lines that aren't there. I'm continuing this floof around the head. I'm imagining the floof from here kind of coming down and connecting to the floof here. So that's what I'm adding in. Oh, and it's hard with this seam here. And then I'm just gonna kind of fade it. I don't know. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. It's hard to do a tutorial on something like this. I don't really know what I'm doing until I do it. And it's probably not going to feel like it's coming together until we've got quite a bit of color down. I think for now I'm just going to focus on this top half. We might save the bottom half for another video, just for time purposes. So I'm just going to throw in a stripe now of light gray, and I'm still using the warm gray one. And I'm basically just ignoring the little tufts of fur that are drawn onto this cat. I'm just kind of making a nice light gray stripe that curves up. It's following the curve this way. I know it's really hard to see because it's so light. And I don't think I'm going to bring it all the way up. I'm just kind of going to bring it smaller and to a bit of a point like this. And this I'm not really doing in circles. In other situations I've done, I've said that, you know, I'm coloring in ovals or circles. That's to get it really smooth. I am being a little zigzaggy here because I'm trying to emulate that hair texture. But it doesn't have to be precise. Okay, now what I think I want to do is add in a darker color. I'm going to go fairly dark. What's this one? This is warm gray five. I'm just comparing it to my swatch chart. Yeah, we'll use this one. Um, let's see. Let's bring up here by the nose a bit. I'm just going to bring that down towards the warm gray two that we did earlier. Let's see, and kitty cats, tabbies, stripy cats usually have some kind of M pattern or stripy pattern up on their forehead, but that's being covered up by this jewel. So I am going to do like a little stripe above the eye. And then I'm going to add in that stripe that I was talking about earlier here. Let me just connect that to the nose. A fairly dark stripe up here. I might even go over that with another darker gray. And then maybe just, I don't know. See, I'm just making that. I don't know why I did that, just for funsies. Mm -hmm. I actually don't think I do want to do that. I think I'm going to erase it. <laughs> now that I'm looking at the reference photo, I think I'm going to go ahead and erase that weird little shape that I just created. Okay. Let's go around the bottom of the ear. A little stripe like that and maybe down here around the eye actually let me go this way so that I'm going in the direction of the fur because the fur is all going to be going this way so I think that's going to be one of the big takeaways from this tutorial. This tutorial might be kind of tricky to follow because I'm looking at a reference photo and I'm not sure that I'll share that photo only because I don't know the legalities of 
how that works, especially because my channel's monetized. I don't, I don't know. Um, I found it by Googling gray tabby cat. But I'm not sure that I'm going to share what I found. Only because I don't know the, the copyright of it. So, let's come up and give a little darkness on the cheek up here. Anyway, what I was saying was, I think one of the takeaways from this tutorial will be color in the direction of the fur. So because the fur is going this way, I'm keeping my zigzags that direction. I'm trying to avoid coloring like this. So the strokes should follow the direction of the fur. It can be a little messy though, because that fur is gonna go all over itself, right? Fur is going in all different directions, but growing in one direction. So generally follow the way that it's growing, and then it can be a little sloppy because you've got long pieces over other long pieces. Okay. I'm gonna add some here by the nose. I'm going over top that warm gray too a little bit. And I think the other takeaway is to trust the process because yeah, this looks a little weird right now. And yeah, I'm feeling a little unconfident, but also at the same time, I know that as I add more color and see more of what actually I put down on the page, I'm gonna be able to work with what I put down. So I think sometimes you just have to trust yourself even if things aren't looking right now the way you hope they will look at the end. Okay, I'm going to add some down here. I'm both looking at the reference photo and also going with my gut. Obviously this cat that Hannah Carlson drew is not the same exact cat that is that I'm looking at in the reference photo. So I just kind of use it to to decide, okay, well, how do the stripes kind of interact with each other? Are dark stripes really close to light stripes? Do they fade into each other? Is there a really stark contrast? And then some of the patterns on the faces, I just, I don't know until I look at a photo, so. Patterns of faces and how the stripes interact with each other, I guess. It's not the perfect word for it, but. It's a little sloppy. It's a little sloppy even for being sloppy. Clean it up. It's hard right in the seam. It's really difficult. Um, this photo, I can't see the back of the cat's head, so I'm making up back here. I think I'm going to save that for later. So I'm going to come back down to the front. Go right under the chin. And see here that fur is going this way. So I'm making sure my strokes are following. And then they kind of start coming straight down. And then we got some this way. And at this point, I'm just going to ignore those little tufts. And then what I think we're going to do is create another stripe here that doesn't connect. Because why not?
So I kind of alternate doing this zigzag motion and then also picking up a pencil and just going in one direction. Right now I'm not trying to draw any individual hairs. But I do want the stroke of the pencil again to follow the, the direction of the fur. And I think I want to make this stripe a little thicker. Okay, and let's draw another lighter stripe. This is the same pencil, but I'm just drawing a lighter stripe next to this darker one that we did. And it will kind of connect up here in a little U. And then I'm gonna have this come around and connect here. It looks a little funny, but I'm going to trust that it's going to work. And I'm not going in the direction of, oh, no. Here I think the fur is growing this way away from the eye. And also this way away from the eye, the fur grows away from the eye, so it doesn't, you know, go into the eye. So we're going to have a kind of a funny spot here where the directions meet and do something funky. And another little stripe there near the face, and then just bring it that way a bit, I think. Add a little bit of gray up here. Something on my page. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of gray up here on the ears. And that fur is growing upward. in this spot here. Yeah, so sometimes I just add a little bit and then when I've added a little bit more I say, okay, I think I I think I'm gonna fill in this area actually that I left or oh I'm glad I left that blank or I don't know. It's really hard for me to visualize ahead of time. So 
I kind of just have to put stuff down on the paper and see what happens and then go from there. Let's see, right under the mouth, I'm gonna make that a little darker just cause there would be a shadow there. Okay, and I think I'm actually, so I think at the face, it's more like small stripey shapes and then down the cat those stripey shapes are going to get larger so i'm going to go ahead and extend this stripey shape that i made and bring the gray a little bit more this way and have the cat be a more overall grayish color The fur is kind of drawn going in this direction now and kind of just all over. So a general this way direction. Just kind of generally extending. Okay. Go ahead and add some up here. I'll probably add some gray in here too, but I don't want to do it yet. I do want to add. Just a little bit more here, however. Okay, I'm going to take warm gray six which is my darkest warm gray. And just deepen some of these pockets, create some slightly smaller stripes in this larger stripe. And right here at the eye, this is a pretty dark stripe here. It's probably one of the darkest points on the cat until we get down to the legs. A little bit right in here, just under the center of the ear. I'm just looking at the markings on my reference photo. And then for shadow, I'm gonna add a little bit more here at the bottom of this ear, the back of this ear. And maybe just in here a bit. Again, I can't see the ears on the photo and the ears aren't as fluffy as they are on this page. So this part I'm just kind of making up. Okay, let me flick some little hairs up onto the ear. All right, and 
looking at my photo just underneath the eye is going to be pretty dark. I'm going to go ahead and create a little stripe like this. And then move, a, kind of fuzz it out, I guess, in the direction that the hair is growing. And just a little boop, 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 and a stripey here. And that's connecting to this nose line here. And then I'm going to create a shadow under this jewel. So I'm doing like a combination of creating the markings on the cat and also uh, drawing in or coloring in the casted shadows from things. So here, this is like a shadow, but these are like the markings on the cat, right? Here is a shadow. And it's going to be darker in this area because um, imagining the top lighting coming down. And then a shadow in here, right where those ears kind of meet. Okay, right under the chin, it's going to be pretty dark. So I feel like I can kind of see it coming together now, but it definitely goes through an ugly phase where you're just thinking, what the heck am I doing? right above the nose. It looks like this cat in the photo has like a little marking right above their nose. It's darker here. It's cute. I think it looks like here is lighter, like this area here, the chin is lighter and then it kind of darkens here to meet. So I don't want to do that with my darkest color though. I'm going to use warm gray three to kind of connect to these two stripes. In this general area, kind of past the, the chin. And some of these stripes right here look really harsh right now, and that's just because of the white of the paper still there. Once we fill it in with a really light, warm gray, it'll help smooth it out. So I feel like you can kind of see what filling this in with really lightly that warm gray three did. Here it looks like it smoothed out that fur. You still get the stripey effect, but it looks soft and fluffy. I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to connect this uh, darker gray to this lighter gray. We're going to kind of 
fade it a bit with this gray that's in between. It's kind of like messy blending. We do want a stripey effect, but we want the stripey effect to be soft. And we'll continue connecting here. Okay, so you can see me fan the direction of the fur I'm going up this way, almost horizontal here. And then as I come down toward the middle of the page, that's kind of where the fur is going down. So then the pencil goes vertical. Turn my book a little bit because it's easier to color the direction sometimes when you turn your book. I think I want to add a little darker gray right in here. So I'm going to pull out again the warm gray four. Oh, I don't think I've used four yet. Let's go ahead and use a four here. kind of like this four it's warmer than the five and the three I think too Some of these larger tufts I'll go ahead and shade, like coloring the bottom of them, but still in the direction that that hair would grow. I'm leaving room for a highlight. Gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of this with that four.
I think we're gonna do this a little lighter here. So we'll use the two or the, let's use the two. Two. And I like to do these bigger areas of the cat kind of first before I come in and fill in here because this is a space where I can practice and make mistakes because that's just kind of, it just looks like the fur might get splayed out funny or just have a funny pattern on the fur. And the face has to be just a little bit more precise. So I practice here before I go to the face. All right, I think I am gonna go ahead toward the face now. I'm still gonna leave this area blank because I'm not sure what I wanna do here, if I wanna add more stripes or not. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna bring in some of the lighter grays here at the face now where we left it white. And I think actually what I'll do, that was a two, but I'm gonna to switch to the one And I'm just gonna fill in the white with the one. And even though it's really light, I'm still going in the direction of the fur. And the direction of the fur is kind of funny up here around the ears because it starts going up and then it also starts coming this way. So I gotta um, think here. I think I'm just gonna not worry so much about the direction of the fur here because the fur is shorter on the face than it is on the rest of the cat. So it's not gonna be long and swoopy in any direction. I'm just gonna fill it in for now. And I think I want um, a little darker there, so I'm gonna leave that white. Okay, so we got that filled in. Just blending a bit. Okay. Warm gray too. I'm gonna blend out some of these stripes a little bit. So I'm kind of going over the edges of these stripes to help blend the warm gray one with the darker stripes. Okay, and I think I want it a little darker right here around the nose. I'm not really looking at the reference photo for this. I just, am gut intuition tells me that that's probably not dark enough. This is the warm gray three.
Okay, and at this point, in some of these areas where I've got these larger, lighter stripes, I am going to go ahead and start making like fur strokes. Okay, and I think what's working about fading this is um, taking this slightly darker, like using the warm gray three and making strokes that are going over the warm gray two and one. And then I think what I'm going to do is use a darker gray, like four or five, to go over the three. And that's gonna help it kind of blend and look like the stripes are laying on top of each other, like the fur is long and growing uh, over I don't know how to describe it. It's going to help the fur look like it's long and the stripes are kind of laying a little bit over top each other. So I'm taking this three and drawing some strokes that are going into that two and one zone. Okay, up here I'm gonna add some more dark. Let's go with the four. Here's four. Really lightly with the four. And I'm not doing the fur strokes anymore, I'm just coloring in the direction of the fur. Which again is kind of funny here at the eyes and the ears.
I think it's okay if you've got some lines going every which way here by the ear. Now I'm just taking this four and just extending some of these shapes that were already there. I'll go ahead and bring that this direction as well. And at this point, I'm just kind of making it up and doing what feels right because I'm getting to an area of the cat that I can't see on the reference photo. So I feel a little more confident filling it in now that I kind of see the rest of what I've done. I'm going to grab the three for this section here, just a little lighter. In the seam, I can't go in the direction of the hair to get all the way down into the seam. I've got to go vertical up and down. I'm going to try to go the direction of the hair as much as I can and blend into that vertical stripe that I kind of just made. Thank you. 
and yours probably doesn't look exactly like mine because we're creating these organic shapes. So don't feel like you have to follow where my lines are exactly. You can kind of use them as a map and then do what you think feels right for you. Okay, I'm gonna grab the two to fill in just kind of hole right here. Okay, so now we have color everywhere on this part of the cat, but we're not close to done. Um, I'm gonna take the two and just do a little more color here. And darken it up a little bit with the two here. in that area and maybe right here I'm just kind of gonna go over some of the lighter spots a little more with the two and some of them with the one This diamond here looks kind of weird. Putting that together like that. Um, okay, grab the one and do the same thing as I was just doing with the two. Pushing a little harder, filling in these lightest areas. I want it a little darker here around the chin. So I'm gonna take, which one is this? Four. Just do a little bit more color here. I think what I'm gonna do to make it darker is actually just do some first strokes. did with the three and now basically the rest of the coloring I'm going to be doing on this is with first strokes and less filling in color And remember that the fur around the muzzle and the eye is really short, so we're not gonna draw long fur strokes there. We'll draw short ones. You can go ahead and go into the lighter areas with a darker pencil to draw some short little strokes. And if you've got Prismacolors, you're gonna be sharpening your pencil a lot through this process.
Those ones are a little too harsh, so I'm going to blend them in. Just create a stripe here to help blend them. Here we go.
we're gonna take slightly darker um five and go over some of those darker zones And then I just kind of do where I feel like it makes sense. I mean, I was doing it in the darker zones, but I'm also randomly doing some spots as well. I think this part of the head up here needs to be a little darker just for balance and aesthetic.
Okay, I'm not done. It's looking a little rough. I am gonna go over it and burnish it a little bit to blend out some of those fur hairs and things. However, I don't wanna do that until I've colored the rest of the cat as well. So I'm gonna leave it here for today. The next video will be coloring the rest of the cat. And then after those are both filled in, we'll go over and do the touch-ups on it to make it look a little smoother and fluffier. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this in the future.